This video is brought to you by Anti-Gravity Lithium-Ion Batteries, used by Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha and Monster Energy Kawasaki and many more teams. And you can use the same battery as Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, and others. Anti-Gravity Batteries offer more power and capacity than the competitors because they give you a larger lithium battery pack. But additionally, they offer features like the world's first batteries with built-in jump starting that will never leave you stranded. So check them out at antigravitybatteries.com. All right, guys, the moment you've been waiting for, 350 Life. This is a huge topic for me personally and through my emails. You guys love 350s. So welcome in. This is Fox Raceway. This is the 2023 Husqvarna launch and more specifically the FC350. Uh, we just got back from Redbud at the KTM launch there and we did the 350. Super impressed with that bike. But now we're back at home in Southern California. I brought my guy, Eddie Larratt. He's 230 pounds. Can a bigger guy ride a 350? Is it worth it? Is it smart? Does it have enough horsepower? Paul is a good judge of that. So deep dirt here for us in Southern California, bigger type jumps. I brought Eddie here to talk about why or why not a 350 could be good and the changes to this thing more specifically. So the difference between the KTM and the Husqvarna this year, if you watch the other videos, is the 10 millimeter lower suspension setting, as well as the Pro Taper bars, and the muffler is a little bit different. So we're going to break this thing down. We're going to have our guy Eddie ride this thing a lot today. Then he's going to talk to you bigger guys and us smaller guys, because we're going to have to look up to Eddie here. 170 pounds versus 230. So stay tuned. We're going to go ride these things, and we're going to break it all down for you and to see if, in fact, this is the ultimate VET CC size. Stay tuned. Alrighty guys, the bike that uh, for me is the most exciting to ride today. That's right, I'm going to call it the 2023 FC350. What a bike, fun, plenty of power for me, exciting power, less rotating mass feel. The bike feels light. On paper, it's not that much lighter. I think maybe a pound or two lighter than a 450, but it feels like 10. Side to side movement is better. These are all the things that I'm thinking while I'm riding. Uh, I'm in map one, lots of excitement, lots of RPM response, but I brought the big guns out. You guys out there email me so much. 350 or 300, Kiefer? 300 two-stroke, 350 four-stroke, what should I do? Husqvarna doesn't offer a 300 two-stroke, so you might have to buy a KTM, but they do offer the FC350, and for me, <sighs> I'm getting older. Maybe less competitive as I get older, and I want more fun, and that 350 is fun to ride. So, Eddie, give us the stats. Give us that weight. Give us that age and that ability, and let's talk about the 350. Uh, yeah, so 6'2", 230 pounds currently, and 43, and 450, uh, or 40B class is mainly what I ride. All right, so you like to race every now and again. You're, you're a guy that sets goals. Uh, maybe once or twice a year. I'm going to go race Mammoth. I'm going to do these races. You want to do good. So now we've been talking about 350 talk for a while. Now you got to ride the new generation 350. You haven't ridden that. You've ridden the older one. So let's dissect that first before we get to the big question. Old 350, this 350, differences for you? Uh, so old 350 was still a really, really good bike, you know, um, Kind of heavy, like you would say, throttle feeling a little heavy. Didn't feel like it, it kind of had that bottom end, like kind of would play with your head a little bit if you were starting against guys in the vet class on 450s. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad bike, but it, it definitely would take you out of, like, Mammoth going up the hill on the start. You know, you, you would definitely labor on that a little bit. But um, Soft dirt. Yeah, soft dirt. Like today, we started out here today. was I was the, the first guy on the track. He didn't like that. 
thank you. But, uh, yeah, it was – I mean, they ripped and watered this track like it was ready for the national style. So uh, you got to feel it at its deepest condition, I guess you could call it. And, yeah, it was an eye-opener for sure. So new engine feel, snappier, more low-end feeling. So give the people out there a rundown of the difference real quick. Yeah, so when I first started, I was kind of maybe a little bummed out at first. But then I realized that we were in about, you know, 12 inches deep of mud. And that, that was just the factor of that. Once we cut the track in a little bit with the guys out here, uh, yeah, I was like, yep, there it is. Uh, definitely has a light feeling to it. Like you were saying, it's, it's very friendly, uh, not overpowering, but easy to ride. And when you needed that little extra, there's a couple jumps right out of corners here. You just sit down and grab it and it goes. So yeah, power. Power in the new engine package is definitely a lot better than what we've had in, in the uh, past. All right, so I hyped this this 350 up a lot at Redbud, and I thought it was the most fun bike besides the 300. The 300 two strokes a great time. 350 for me was the most fun four stroke for me to ride. Today it's no exception. I rode a stock one, and then I rode uh, one with had 6,500 cartridges in it, a track shock, an FMF slip on some better brakes, man, what a difference it makes. So being that you're 230 pounds, an older guy, married with kids, want to have fun, 350 sizing for you. How would you explain to the, you know, the guys watching this, um, should they buy a 350 even though they're, they're bigger dudes? There's enough power there. So my percentage might be a little high, but I'm going to say 75% of the vet riders in my category, my weight, riding as much as I do, maybe once, twice a week, a 450 is too much bike. Yeah. I, I, you, you, at one point early on, you are riding the bike, but then it transitions to the bike riding you and becomes more of an enemy than, than you know, your savior. So I'm stuck with 350. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. I think it's going to be really good to take yourself to your fitness threshold instead of let, you're waiting for your arms to blow up and not be able to hang on, and now you're in danger zone. So I think the 350, the, the new 23, has more than enough power. Uh, I made the mistake of clicking it in map two just to see what it was all about, and, and it was about a half a lap, and I went right back. Because, it, it, I mean, the track did dry out a lot and got, got pretty nasty, but there was no need for it. You know, I, I don't see it. In Southern California with our tracks, map two is, is you're, you better be on your game to hang on to it. All right, so the positive is the engine. We'll go to, the, we'll go to a negative because this is the real world right here, people. It's, you're 230 pounds. It's soft, right? So um, do you mind an air fork? And obviously I'm sure you want to do a conversion or whatever, but... If you could stiffen up the air fork a little bit, which you can do, 11 bar, but you gotta guys, you guys got to know, when you go stiffer in the air, you're going to get a little bit of a harsher of a feel. Um, so the valving will have to change a little bit for a guy like Eddie. For me, not so much. But you're a little scared at times to jump a couple jumps a day because you're so soft. Yeah, so, I mean, it's the same thing like with the Rockstar Edition when we did that shootout. Like, obviously, with the bikes only having 0.8 of an hour, it started out okay, you know. We pumped it. We pumped it up. We cranked the spring down as far as we could. We got 113 out of that. Yeah, yeah. So nowhere near what we needed. But um, yeah, I mean, it, I I would not say don't try to fix your air fork. You got to put spring in and spend all this money to make it right. You can make an air fork work to a good portion that would make most riders probably happy. Well, Dave just rode it on the 450. Didn't even notice anything. Like he said, it was fine. So I guess it's just certain people, right? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Dave's 185 pounds, so he's a lot closer. I, if if I was able to spend some time with WP or one of these companies valving and springing it to my weight, I would probably be in the same category as Dave. As I'm not finicky enough to say Air Fork sucks. Like that's if if you say that, you're you're not speaking the truth because the Air Fork has come so far. In the, in the last few years that it's it can be just as good as a spring fork. There just might be a rider feel that you're looking for that you can't get in an air fork that you can get in a spring fork. So yeah, so the, the, the back of the bike is low for Eddie. 
which could hurt the cornering. But let's talk about the chassis feel for you. Again, you rode last year's bike. We're at Apollo, bigger jumps, ruts, softer dirt most of the morning. And then now, how is it cornering for you and stability? Um, it feels the last couple of weeks or, you know, a couple of months I've been on that Rockstar 250F. So I had a lot of, of you know, knowledge coming into it. And, and I think that this bike feels the same uh, as, as that current bike I've been riding. I'm not uh, 6'2" not really sold on the 10 millimeter lower. Uh, I would like to try that back to back with some normal stuff to see if it helps or hurts the cornering. But I did find myself kind of deep ruts, hard right handers going up this roller section behind us. I got cramped. I felt a little cramped on it, but it's not the end of the world, you know? Something you guys gotta know too. So if you're like, hey Kiefer, I wanna go to a different shock, you're gonna have to change the linkage if you want to go to a KTM style shock and get out of the 10 millimeter lower zone, right? So it's not a matter of just switching shocks. You have a linkage you have to go to. And also remember this, the Husqvarna Exact Pro 6500 cartridges that you guys may or may not buy is proprietary for a Husqvarna. It's different than the KTM. So they're two separate kits. So they're not the same. Um, obviously internal, internal settings are different on the Husqvarna. The valving is also different. It's not the same valving spec as the KTM. So there is some proprietary parts to this motorcycle that you just can't swap over if your buddy has a KTM. So it will not work. So I just want to give you guys that feedback as well. So bigger guys may not feel it as much. I do say that the 10 millimeter lower setting is helpful side to side movement. When I got to lean into something really quick, that does benefit the Husqvarna. But for me, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, I guess. That's, that's basically how I would say it. For me, I would like a little bit more of an upward feel, and I like that more. But, again, shorter inseam guy like Kitty. He's a little shorter. He likes that feel. We're a little bit taller, 6 foot, 6'2", bigger dudes, maybe not so much. But it shouldn't, hinder, it's, it shouldn't bother you guys to say, oh, I'm going to go pick a KTM over Husqvarna. I still feel like a bigger guy can appreciate this setting as well because it will help you um, side to side movement. So I like front end traction on this. For me, even with an air fork, I feel like I have a lot of front end feel. You? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it It felt connected. You know, I did not never find myself like knifing or standing up in the middle of the corner. Like I felt like I could just lay in and let it just kind of go around the corner. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't, it did, like I said, it, the 10 millimeter lower is not the end of, you know, it's not like, oh, I can't, I can't ride the bike. It, it's fine. It's good. It's just, it's a preference, a rider preference thing. So ergonomically, again, like I sit on the bike, it feels nice. Um, I don't really have that many complaints. I would cut the handlebar down, but for me, I still feel like I want a little bit of a grippier seat. In the past, the Husqvarna seat <laughs> was a little bit aggressive. But this one's actually really smooth, and I just feel like I need a little bit more texture to stay in the pocket. Uh, but nonetheless, for me, I like that feel. Uh, any kind of complaints for you, Eddie? No, not not really much. I mean, bar's a little low for me for how tall I am. But, uh, again, I, I think I used to ride, like, an, a wide bar, an, eight, an 800, 811 up there. I agree. I, I think I would like to shorten that bar up a little bit, get the cockpit a little tighter for me. But... Uh, not nah, ergonomically it i mean just like the 250f it's great peg to seat to bar everything feels good all right real quick before we wrap this thing up here if i can compare a 350 engine to a 450 350 is a lighter crank feel it spools up quicker quicker revving has more excitement down low than a 450 a 450 has like a little bit more of a what i call a heartbeat so the heartbeat is that thump that crank mass going around it has a deeper heartbeat the, the 350 has more of a, a faster heartbeat. Like, if I can paint the picture for you guys, uh, 350 is like 140 beats per minute, where the, the 450 has maybe uh, 100 beats per minute. It's just the heartbeat is quicker on the 350, and you just get more snap. Granted, you don't get as much pulling power as a 450, but I will have to argue that once it's up in the RPM, I would say it has damn near as much as a 450. I'm not missing any power for me at my level 
being that I was on the 350. I just raced at Fox Raceway last weekend and going through some of these sections and I was on a 450, I'm like, I would have loved to have been on this bike just because it's easier to maneuver and get in and get out versus a 450. So a lot of positives within a 350cc size. This Husqvarna is snappy. I do feel like low end is a little bit snappier than a KTM. I just got off one at Redbud. I think the Husqvarna, maybe it's the muffler, a little bit better RPM response down low. Again, map one, he's map one. We don't need map two, a little bit too herky-jerky. But fun bike to ride. So the question is, before we end this whole segment here, we've wrapped enough. Are you going to sell the Kawasaki? And would you buy? I see your lip moving. I see. Would you buy a 350 four-stroke? Would your wife be like, yeah, no problem? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's happening for sure. I, I it, It's just uh, it's a funner bike to ride. Like I said, I don't ride enough. I don't train hard enough to hang on to a. You want some cheeseburgers every now and again. That's right. That's right. And I want a bike I feel comfortable and safe on. Uh, you know, you can get hurt on any of these, but I, I feel like I have more control on that 350, and I can ride it to my limit and not just be hanging on it like a flagpole. And it won't piss off your wife because you'll come back intact. Exactly. That's what's most important. You don't want a divorce. No one wants a divorce over a dirt bike, right? Just buy a 350 and don't get divorced because you will stay married. You'll stay on the bike. You won't be on the couch with a broken leg or a broken arm. And then what happens is when you're broken, you get moody. Us dirt bike guys get moody because we're not riding. So stay on a bike. Buy a 350. Husqvarna did a great job with this. So uh, for me, I approve. Eddie approves. The other guys behind the camera that you can't see approve. They wrote it, and they like it. So, you know, they passed the Pepsi challenge, so to speak. All right. If you want more information or anything that you want to ask about 250, 350, 450, Chris at KieferIncTesting.com. That is my email address. It's open for you guys to ask questions. This is what we do over here at RacerX and KieferIncTesting.com. We help you guys. We're here to help. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will try to guide you in the right direction. But please subscribe to RacerX, 12 issues, $30, not much money. Are you a subscriber? Yes. No way, really? Yeah, I did it because we got called out in the last video, the Rockstar edition, so I did. I paid my 30 bucks for 12 issues. You get a free gift yet? Not yet. I, it's coming soon. It's in the mail. It's in the mail. All right, we'll see you on the next test. See you guys.